grieving parents, fighting over patchwork corpses. The, sanitar the sanatorium had been re re uh, derelict for years. A burnt out patch of dead earth on top. A forgotten warrant of cell blow. Good, Jason thought. He'd already, he's already in the dirt. There was a moral line that Bruce had sworn never to cross. Jason would cross it for him. Jason had been watching a grief-stricken mother piece her sons together when the kindergarten speaker's uh, system came back to life. No, Robin, he thought. Push it down! Jason pulled down the heavy iron doors that would have once led to a larger chute and dropped into the dark. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall, Joker saying. Why are you not hanging out with Humpty Dumpty? It was a net halfway down. They caught him. It broke with his weight, sending him tumbling out of the end of a chute into the gra granite floor. Jason gritted his teeth, breathed through the pet. Oh my god! The first swing of the crowbar took out two teeth. The second broke his ankle. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty together again. Joker was singing. Oh, hell no! Hell to the no, 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 no! Just Jack! Jack Ryder's weekly column only in the Herald. Hey there, Gotham, Jack's back. I know, I know, it's been a while, but I've been busy. Book deals, TV appearances, negotiations, the syndicate was very column. Those things take time, Jack fans. Too much time, actually. And the agents never call you back, so I decided to give up on them. Besides, I'd already been starring, I'd already had a starring role in the, in the televisual event of the season. Yep, that was my handsome face. You saw scrolling from an immaculating tailored suit and given evidence into the Arkham City Commission. And I just wanted to set the record straight. Yes, I said that Arkham City was illegal. Yes, I produced documentary evidence of prisoners being abused, degraded, forced to live in squalor, and nearly killed. And yes, I said that anyone exposed to such horror should be released and generously compensated. But let's get one thing straight, Gotham. I was talking about me. I didn't, I didn't need to see that crap. I shouldn't have even been there. I saw one guy eating his own arm when the food supplies ran low. His own arm! Cannibalism, guys! I mean, he didn't look like he was accustomed to, uh, to a haunting cuisine on the other side of the wall, but me? I'm dying well, Gotham, and I needed therapy after. So all you losers sending me hate mail, stop it! It's not my fault all the crooks got free. I just wanted Gotham City to repay its debt to me, and I'm sure you do too. Hashtag justice for Jack Ryder. Hashtag Jack Ryder Gate. Hashtag please shut up, Jack Ryder. Hashtag we get it. Now sit the heck down, Jack Ryder. I. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay? Wallflower. Okay, wallflower. Wallflower. Pamela stirred from her slumber and squinted at the lone orchard on her nightstand. Conventional wisdom says that Glorissa, uh, Gloriosa couldn't survive, could never survive in such a dry, frigid conditions. Just as, it, as the doctors have predicted, she herself could wither and die within a month of her admittance to Seattle's General Intensive Care Unit. It had been almost six, and the flower was in full bloom. While Pamela had never felt more stronger or more in tune with the world around her, the orchard had been a gift from her mentor, Professor Jason Woodrow, the man who who professed his love for her, and then left her to die from the toxic cocktail of of phyto hormones he forced her with to ingest in the lab they shared. Oh, Pamela's initial heartache seemed a paltry in hindsight. She realized Woodrow's uh, parting gift was far greater than even he could have imagined. The orchard spoke to her now. Ethereal whispers of a world beyond those sterile walls of a higher purpose, a new life. Pamela banged sleeve when the door opened and the handsome specialist approached the bed to check on her. She thrust on an arm, gripping the back of his neck with an inhuman strength that pulled him in close. The man was powerless to resist as she planted a deadly kiss at his lips. Timid wallflower of Pamela Isley was no more. Poison Ivy had arrived. Oh, guys. Okay.
Okay, keep your friends close and keep your enemies closer. At those of you. Keep your friends close. Master Bruce, you have a visitor. Bruce looked up from his position, curled in a fetal ball, on the window ledge. He had plenty of visitors since the death of his parents, an effortless stream of grown-ups who suffocated him in kindness, patting him on the head and talking in soft, patronizing voices, as if the sentence spoken at normal volume might cause the poor little orphan to detonate like a bomb they'd rather leave undisturbed than risk having diffused. This wasn't one of those people. This was Thomas Elliot. Tommy. The blonde boy pushed past Bruce, Alfred bef uh, before Bruce could respond. He looked at Bruce and grinned. Thank you, Alfred, Bruce said, trying to sound formal in front of his friend. Alfred coughed awkwardly before leaving the room. It was all, it was these moments when their others were around that he and Bruce were still learning to navigate together. Alfred had reached for Bruce's hand and at the funeral only for the boy to snatch it away, embarrassed, yet he refused to let go during the car ride home. We have to be kind to you, Tommy slumped away, slumped casually down next to Bruce and fixated him with an intense glare. Stay or fudge! That mirrored Bruce's own. That's what Miss uh, that's what Miss uh, Miss Heislop said at school. Everyone's being kind to me, Tommy. It's boring. Tommy thought about this. I wish my parents were dead. He said eventually, then I'd be a billionaire like you. <coughs> <laughs> and the, oh my god, here it goes. Bruce's stunned laughter echoed through the Maynard's empty rooms. And my laughter sounds like this. I kind of took that after uh, hearing the uh, the uh, One Direction, you, uh, you know, um, the what makes uh, you don't know you're beautiful, what makes you beautiful, whatever that song is from One Direction when there was laughter and all this stuff. Yeah. And <laughs> okay. Power play. Okay, power play. No more of this grief crap, thought Scratch. Six months since the Joker died. Times Harley moved on. And she couldn't move on? Well, it's time the gang did. Scratch was smart. Everybody said it, and he had a plan. Harley had one of her freaky Joker statues, the ones with the television sat in the shoulders of her own. Every night she kissed the creepy video reel of his face goodnight, right on the grinning lips. and she don't know she's still in an abusive relationship. Scratch was gonna put a bomb inside it, kill Harley and decapitate the old boss too. Nothing says put Scratch in charge like that. Harley was out. Gang war with Penguin's crew. That's all they did these days. Defend instead of expand. Scratch was gonna char was gonna change that, he thought. Slipping into her room. Red and black everywhere. The curtains, the carpet, the bed like playing cards. Harley said that when she handed out the new uniforms, clubs and hearts, Joker was in the corner, grinning at him. His eyes followed Scratch around the room, interrupted by the occasional static, I dare you, they said, as Scratch crept up to the smiling ghost. Sorry, boss, he said, taking out this screwdriver and the small explosive charge, but I gotta do this for the gang. Um, bad idea, Scratchy, Joker replied. Scratchy, Scratch froze, terrified. Bad idea, Scratchy, Joker said. Same imitation as before. That a bad idea, Scratchy. Scratch relaxed. She cut it together, made it out of old tapes. But that meant the skull-cracking impact of Harley's baseball bat cut off the thought. Oh, so she hit him with a bat. No, it like she smacked him. Fallout! Your Honor, Gordon shouted, the man's insane! For the last time, Commissioner, we are not here to discuss the prisoner's state of mind. The judge whistled, looked around at Gotham for the peril.
board panel. Oh, look, Jim had seen these dozen times this morning. Please, Whistle's watery eyes were saying, don't make this harder than this, that it is. Gordon shot him more um, so sent and looked back. To his left, the prisoner started talking again. Come now, Your Honor, as slanderous as the commissioner's comments are, he's only expressing his frustration that the fractal of the farcial uh, nature of this so-called legal proceeding. Perhaps he doesn't understand his presence. It's merely appearance sake. You are a decorative detective. Riddler concluded, watching Jim a smart smile. <laughs> Eddie! Oh my god! Eddie, please! <laughs> Gordon understood her, all right. Thousands of prisoners had all held illegally and then nearly murdered by Hugo Strange. The inevitable class action lawsuit had left this tedious soul-sapping exercise in its wake. Hundreds of payroll he uh, hearings that only that went one way. The prisoner had got their freedom back and Gordon got a signed declaration that the offender promised to be in light on their best behavior from here on up. From here on in. Okay, yeah. Now, the, Rid the uh, Riddler continues, given that our poor commissioner must endure several hundred more of these hearings, why don't you spare us the tedium of forcing him to reiterate the state's illegally soiled uh, case against me and simply grant me the freedom to which I am tiled? The entire payroll board spluttered indignantly. Man's got a point, Gordon concluded as he walked out of the door. Oh... Oh, yeah, because of the stuff that, uh, the whole Arkham City debacle just had so many people, like, pissed. And I actually heard on the wiki that the Riddler was actually one of the guys who sued for, the, over that whole insanity and ended up winning his case, so. Wow. Crazy day, Eddie. Frozen out. How long has this been going? Oh, uh, nearly approaching 40 minutes. Four, nearly 40 minutes of me reading. Hilarious. Wrapped in cold, Nora slumbered, deep in slumber. Nora dreams. She dreamed of Victor. The spelling of that is making me cringe. That's not how you spell his name. That's how you spell Victor Crumb's name. Not, not, not her, not her frickin' husband. Of the man he was and the man she knew he'd become. She heard him sometimes, his new metallic voice piercing through the frozen veil of her sleep like an ice pack. She held his curses, his muttered threat, and when whatever new therapy he was working on failed, which and when cells refused to divide and line up like soldiers on parade, when carefully upward, mutations laid stubbornly, dormant and unresponsive genes, she heard of, she heard his harsh, anguished screams. Oh, it had been gradual, this thawing of her consciousness, back into something alive, something that flowed thickly, liquidly, from dream to memory that could even snatch in traces of the outside world. She was trapped, imprisoned in frozen flesh, but not afraid. Fear seemed impossible for her for her cooled brain, that there was some kind of freedom in this new existence. Freedom from the Huntington's racked body she left behind. This will work, Nora, this will work. Victor talked to her for most days. Th uh, worked through scientific problems as if she were as if she was his lab assistant. Professed his love, reminisced about the early months of their marriage. But the memories were distant now. Nora knew. The derails became vaguer every... The details became vaguer every time. She wasn't just a frozen body. Nora had long realized she was an idealized memory, frozen in time. Was this love? Victor said he could save her. But every second passed, they drew them further apart. No, Nora remembered love. Love was warm. Dang! Okay. Burn notice. Lens. Okay, burn notice. Lens took a generous swig from his hips flask, then pushed through the heavy oak doors through Tommaso Panessa's office. Garfield, have a seat! His boss's plump red face and expanded waistline betrayed the fact that he was bankrupt. 
financially as well as morally. Bro, that's just that's just straight up and uh, that's just straight up a polite way to say the dude's fat. Lynch shrunk into the chair as Cadet said dispensed with a small uh, with small talk. We begin to justify the unceremonious firing of this lowly FX artist. Despite critical acclaim, the Infernal have recovered less than a quarter of its inflated budget in the six months since its release. Such a high-profile failure, failure combined with the increased attention from the IRS meant that laundering millions of dollars of mob money through Panetta Studios was no longer a valuable business plan. Always liked you, Lindsay, he said in a venetum. And a veterinarian comforting an animal before pushing the plunger on a lethal injection. Jesus Christ. But the industry is different now. As a studio, we need to adapt or perish. And that means making some tough decisions. Firing him? Garfield declined the pro the the proffered cigar with a wave of his hands. He felt sick watching the greasy old bastard wrap his lips around the ward of dried leaves leaving that cost. That cost three times his monthly salary. I'm sure a man of your intelligence knew this day would come, Garfield. I'm sure you prepared for this eventually. Lynch was prepared, all right. He struck a match off the solid oak table and held it up to light the man's cigar. He met his boss's gaze for the last time, then expelled a mouthful of a nitrile oxide. I can't pronounce that. Through the dancing flame. Woo! -hoo! Must have been pissed. Uh, contingency. <laughs> no, and then there's Scarecrow. Slade pushed the hunting knife across the whetstone, the smooth scrap of steel underscoring the combat life feed. The last cobra went offline with a burst of radio interference. Slade shook his head. Damn, amateurs! <laughs> A surveillance troll was circling above Bleak Island, relaying the battle below. The knight was protecting the clubburst and failing. Bowen had taken apart his support, and now it was just the two of them left. Slade glanced at the, at the monitor, their heat signatures stalking each other through the city streets. He ran his thumb along the blade, still dull. Then sharpen it, you clown! This was torture, forced to wash from a mobile command center. The ace chemical siege, the occupation, everything. Batman had taken on an entire army and was winning. Slate didn't belong here, observing. It was like watching someone play a video game badly, itching to pick up the controller. <laughs> I'm dead. Contingency wasn't his style. He was better than that, but Scarecrow just knew just how to sell it. He promised the soldier an end to those nightmares, the fear that made his hands trouble. Revenge is what you seek, and I can give it to you. Jesus Christ, Scarecrow! <laughs> the knight's tank took a strike. The system's critical. A, plo a plume of white static erupted from the screen. The screen. No one was making it out, uh, uh, making out of it that thing alive. Seconds later, the radio cared crackled. It is time, Scarecrow announced. Batman is yours. Slade tested the blade. It was sharp enough now. Okay. Yo. Cheap shot. Okay. A close shot with death shots. By Jack Ryder. Are you ready, Jack? Batman out looking straight at me. One hand. What I feel for the administration. The other with respect. I'm ready, Batman, I replied bravely. Then let's do this, Jack. Together. Batman said, asked, really. The Dark Knight set up from the behind our cower then, as we prepared to take on the deadly assassin dead shot together. Was they afraid? Dear reader, I was terrified. But I couldn't let it show. Batman needed me. Then I saw it. The light the laser slight sight playing like a lover's tongue across his nipple. Ew! Jesus! Oh my god! Yo! Jack, no! You did not have to do that! Jesus, this is fan fiction stuff! <laughs> Shouted dramatically, I dive forward, then knocking the Cape Crusader to the ground as the bullet whizzed past my ear. Batman was back on his feet in an instant. However, he grabbed me and pulled me and pulled us both into cover behind the chimney, 
Shoot, and the bomb ruined the Arkham City. What now, Jack? Batman asked his voice cracking slight, slightly under the strain. I thought for a moment. You need to hide behind a cover whenever he's looking in our direction, Batman, I explained patiently, and then try to reach for the vent under the, under the helipad. Batman looked at the distance between him and the sharpshooter marksman. You can do it, Batman, I, I said reassuringly. I know you can. <laughs> and God, you freaked him out, dude. Fixation. I do not allow any visitors. I do not allow him visitors. Warden Sharp sputtered and spluttered angrily as Batman walked past. It's not a social call. It's not a cell. Harsh fluorescent bulbs bounce up their light off into the sterile white padded wall. It's really you! You're here! The cell straight jacket a copied it, a, uh, occupant flung himself from the corner of the room and he was slobbering, weeping at Batman's armored boots. I'm so glad it's you! Bat! Joker sobbed. They think I'm mad! Batman kicked upwards, flipped the maniac into his back, and brought the foot back down to pin him there. Three dead, all children. You've been locked up here since Blackgate. Batman pushed down, rips cracked. Tell me how! The sudden violence, the, cu the cultural sound of Batman's roar surprised them both. Batman backed towards the door. A Paul suddenly freed. The Joker rolled on the floor, hysterical. I knew it! He giggled. I knew you cared! <laughs> Batman threw, drew his caper out of self, pushing the anger, the, the sudden self-disgust, back down. You got out, Joker! How? Maybe I am bad! Joker scrambled backwards. Lean against the wall, because this is the first time I've heard of it. He paused then and spoke with sickening sincerity. I didn't kill your kitties, and you didn't need excuses to drop by. When Sharp returned with the security, Joker was alone, grinning ear to ear. I bit his head, Sharpie! <laughs> oh no! False Dawn! Okay, false dawn. Gotham's no pl kind of place to raise a child. The, the, those were Ellen's first words when he told her about the promotion and transferred to GCPD. To say the move had put a strain on their marriage would be an understatement. The first few months were difficult, but gradually she established roots, made new friends, warmed a new life in the city. Commissioner Gordon had even promised to use his influence to secure their son Tyler a place at McCallum Academy. Life was good. Then Arkham City happened. Ellen's doubts resurfaced. The honeymoon period was over.